Hey guys, I'm sitting in my messy old office here. I just wanted to show a few things. I'm in the process of redoing my book, as you can see here. See, I lost 62,000 words. I'm already back up to 37,000, so I'm getting there a lot faster than the first bit, but it's all, you know, written down, so I just kind of got to copy it now, so. But here, I just wanted to show you. This is, here, let's go, we'll follow up here first. So here's Horn Pain in Northern Ontario. Here is my, uh, for those of you who read the first book, this here is my trap line. This is Nagogamy Lake, that big lake uh, that I mentioned several times in there. This is Hiawatha Lake right here. Go and clear up there. Google Earth. There we go. Okay, so this is this is where my base, my home uh, camp was on this bay right there where that little hand is. That's where I had that dugout cabin. Now down here, I mean this is what I want to show you too, is like look at this now. All this white lines is all roads. All this lighter area, that's all cut over now. This That entire trap line practically has been cut over. Unreal. But anyways, so, you know, here's where one of my trails went from here. I went across over to here, then down, all the way along the creek. This is Little Pody Lake here, for those that read the book. And I had a canoe down here, and then I would up the creek. This is all pretty much, that's a little short, but this is all little rapids through here. And then all the way up, this is Big Pody. Right here, this is where I, right at the mouth of this creek, right in there, is where I ha had built a, a lean-to that night when it turned so cold, when I'd, I'd paddled up to here, built a lean-to, and it was so frigidly, unbelievably cold. I mean, I never got no sleep. All I was doing was running and cutting firewood all night long. And when I went to go in the, leave in the morning, there was two inches of ice on the pond on this whole lake. The whole lake was was covered over. And I ended up having to walk all the way back. And uh, but I just I put a trail across like so up here across to this here pond down along the creek and then right to here and, and cut my trail here where I joined up from Hiawatha up to Little Fraser River and this is um, this was my main walking trail here along the creek here along all the way this is Otter Lake then over to East or to Amabel Lake and right on here you can actually see the cabin when it clears up. That's Joe Cool's moose hunting camp that I uh, stayed in when I was on Amabel Lake. That's the building right there. And over here is where I, I don't know if you if you read it, you remember, I was going from here to Skookashu when I got into that big uh, iron deposit, whatever magnetic anomaly that threw my compass into and it somehow from here to here led me all the way like this. I mean, this is as close as I can figure. All the way up here and then over to here somewhere. And I ended up coming out on the lake right here. <laughs> That's a little bit out of your way, you know, a little bit lost. But And then this here is the river up. This is East Amabel. And then all the way over to Fraser Lake. And if you uh, remember the time when I uh, had the dealings with the wolves. Okay, this is Chain Lakes here. Okay, my trail over to Chain Lakes was right from here. Over and came out here. Oh no, sorry, not right there. Right from here. Over and came out here. 
and then this was the chain of lakes. Now right in here is where I found that moose that was falling through the ice and tried to get it out but couldn't. So then it ended up the next day, you know, it was dead and ended up butchering what I could get out of it and hiding the meat in here. And then taking, carrying some back to the camp and then coming back and uh, when I got back there, you know, a few days later, whatever it was, the wolves had eaten all the meat. And uh, they, uh, you know, I mean, they had been there right fresh, but I was on a trek to get up to here. I, so I went up and I went up this creek across to this pond here and then cut across land over and I was trying to hit this pond, but I missed it and ended up coming out on this pond and then walked down and that's when I hit Fraser Lake for the first time but going back it was you know it was right in here where it actually got dark I was in here um, you know but it was not dark 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 then but by the time I got back down to here it was real dark and where I had the, the moose meat hidden right there where the wolves had been I could see there was wolf tracks over top of my my snowshoe tracks and so anyways I walked back down here down my trail and uh, got to here and then right there is where the beaver house was where my trail went in now when I got right into here into this thick spruce right there that's where I lost total darkness and that's where I got surrounded by the wolves and uh, and where they they wanted to try and get the dog and and I mean that was like I said in the book I mean just so pitch black that you literally could not see I couldn't see my snowshoes but anyways good times um, that, like I said Hiawatha Lake right over here if you uh, read the fur fishing game magazine story um, about how a Canada or when a Canada day a Canada goose saved my life this was where I almost drove into the open water right in the mouth of the river here because you see how that shallow is up right here well this was all open because of the very warm water all over here this whole thing in that snowstorm I almost drove right into the open water but anyways so that was my first trap line the book I'm writing right now took place right in here this is the trap line here all that this is Big Cabey Cabinicagami Lake this is Nimagus Lake that's where my my base camp was there see right down here on this big hill there was a fire tower and this cabin here was the because this is the nearest lake that they could land a plane in and that so there was a camp there for the fire um, lookouts to to stay overnight when the plane dropped them off and then they walked into the cabin that they had at the base of the hill but anyways if you do end up reading the second book this is Jocelyn Lake as you can see there these here are mountain lakes first mountain second mountain a lot of the story happened on there this is the KB River my cabin was right here and uh, that's the one I built there and then this is the honeymoon shoots the big waterfalls that's on that river and like I said the you know there's about 20 miles of river in there that's on my line right from okay right from here actually about here all the way up to the chutes and then all the way down to where it, right to where it goes into uh, KB Lake proper and then all over here all over this area here and then the boundary was right through here this is the height of land all this water here flows um, into uh, Lake Superior and all the water on this side of this hill right here this all flows into the uh, Arctic Ocean, Hudson's Bay, James Bay. 
But yeah, this is the area that I'm, my second book is mainly about within a whole bunch of short stories of uh, other areas and stuff like that too. Here I'll show you my third trap line. Okay, here's Wawa where I was, I owned a motel right here. Um, but this is where I fought forest fires out of, that was our main base. Okay, so now here, this is Pokey Lake. I have a, I, or I have, I had a cabin right here. And I had another cabin on Soothier Lake right there. And then I had, this is Gibson, Jarvie Lake, um, Beaver Lake. Holy cow, I can't remember the name of this lake. Good pike fishing in this lake here though. Big pike. Not a lot of them, but big. But, so my trap line down on this one was like here. Okay, so this is, this is Puckasaw Park in here. And my trap line was all of this along the boundary of the park all the way up here. Like so. Oops. All the way over like so. But all these lakes. This lake here. I mean lots of beaver in this area. This lake here, you know, it's what, three miles long I think. Yeah, three and a half miles long. And I think there's seven beaver houses on that lake. It's all surrounded by poplar, most of it. And uh, and then, so I go checking 32 traps. One day beaver trap I checked on the lake, on some of these ponds along here. Because oh, on this trap, this was the first trap line I ever had that had a road in it. And Because right in here, a road came down like this and then went out like that. So I could trap this area with, on road. But anyways, 32 beaver traps. I caught 28 beavers one day. Wish it was like that all the time, hey? But, anywho. I regress. So anyways, that's, uh, this is, you see the trapping areas that I, you know, so all this area is where I spent all my time. Or not all of it, but most of my time. Okay, but what I wanted to show you mainly, that was just a sidebar. Some of my old, um, Hunter Trader Trapper magazines. This one is January 37. Just wanted to see if you can see the fur prices. So here you got muskrats. Large fall. I don't know where this thing's pointed, so I hope you can see it. Large fall rats from New York area. You know, dollar forty-five. Mediums, ninety-five. Smalls, fifty-five. Large winter is a buck fifty. Then you go to skunks, buck seventy-five. Possums, fifty cents, about the same as they are now. But here, so nineteen thirty-seven, mink, large, medium, smalls, seventeen fifty for large mink. Raccoons, eight dollars. Otter, twenty dollars. Beaver, thirteen fifty. Red fox, seven fifty. Okay, what else is interesting? Fish are thirty dollars, forty dollars, fifty dollars. Martin twelve, lynx thirty. Wolverines five dollars. Hey Jason, how would you like to get five dollars for all your <laughs> wolverines? But here's what's cool: house cats, black or colored ones. <laughs> And they were worth, house cats were worth 30 cents. That's hilarious. That's about 30 cents more than I think they were. Beaver casters, two fifty to $4. dollars I'm guessing that would be a pound. Oh, yeah. Pound. So. Okay, so that's one of them. Now we get into a little bit older ones. And you're, we're talking now November 1921. And muskrat to dollar fifteen, skunk three fifty, 
mink nine dollars and raccoons five bucks otters twenty five beaver twenty five twenty eighteen red fox ten dollars foxes black or silver anywhere from twenty five to two hundred dollars bears were fifteen fishers thirty five to twenty wolves six dollars just think there jason was lynx at where are lynx here they don't even have them on oh lynx is so eighteen dollars martin twenty dollars you know okay so we'll go back even a little further This is 19, April 1906. Mink 550. Okay, and I did a, I, I did a, I can't see if I can, I'll see if I can find it here. Where is it right there? A dollar back here, one of these books, one of the times I checked, a dollar back then would be worth $26 right now. So mink, five fifty. So if a mink was worth five fifty then in the, in that time frame that would be the same as twenty-six dollars times that right now. But I'm guessing they didn't, you know breed a hundred million ranch mink back then. I know they did a few probably, but not, not not that many. Fox, red fox, four dollars, twenty-six times that. Otter, twenty dollars, twenty-six times that would be really nice for an otter. And beavers, eight dollars. Muskrats, well, they went down from before twenty-five cents. But that's still, you know, that's, you think about it when we had good prices uh, a couple years ago. It's basically about what we were getting. Black bear, $20. Brown bear, grizzly, wildcats, fisher, $8. But here's where it gets really screwed up. Black fox. Not sure what they consider a black fox. 750 400 200 250 Silver fox, 300 200 that is messed up. Martin, $25. You know, that's like a, getting $700, $800 for one right now. House cats, again, 35 cents. Huh. Well, I guess these ones are probably around the same. This one is... 1908. I'll just take a quick peek at it before I show you some other stuff that's kind of cool. Yeah, mink 5, 3, coons 90 cents, red fox 350, otter 18. Again, black fox $750. The magazines are in pretty good shape, eh? Hey? This one's missing a little piece of the cover, but great, great stories in these things, too. Okay, but here's what I want to... I got some pretty cool stuff that I've collected over the years. Here is a Trapper Education Manual from Manitoba. No big deal. But downstairs I have one from Alaska. I have one... The one from Ontario from when I took my trapping course when I was 16 years old. But this is kind of cool. Dan Bishop School of Fox and Coyote Trapping. The book, a couple of cassettes. And here. This is 
not exact trapping stuff, but it's pretty cool because you got this is a FC Taylor Fur Company. Look at that the envelope, how perfect shape that is. Here we got a trap catalog or flyer. Number zero jump traps, two ninety nine a dozen. Hey, look, there's that. Hey, there's that trap I got right here. What the heck? I never even saw this before. Look, I've got this exact trap right there. They were 84 cents each. I bet you I could get more than that for it now. But look, same exact trap. Except it doesn't have the V on the uh, on the pan. That's weird. Got nothing on the pan. I wonder if the pan... Well, this is even before this. And what year is this? Got to be some kind of a date on it or something. I don't know, but we'll take a peek a little more. Genuine new house bear traps. You know, eighteen, twenty dollars each. Look at that. I've never seen one of these. A jump style stop loss trap. Never ever seen one. Never even, didn't even know they existed. Hold fast jaws prevents escape. Little clamp on teeth for your traps. That's messed up. What's on the back side of this? Oh, for shipping your furs. I wish I had a time frame on this. But what else we got in this thing? So I'll open up the other side. Why does the other side not open? Is it some secret compartment or something? Huh, I don't think it's ever been opened. No, it's got staples in it. Oh, I see. It's a book. It must be childproof. Oh, they had wire muskrat stretchers in. Dollar eighty-five for a dozen. Oh, look! This must be some of the first colony muskrat traps for sale. Two dollars and fifteen cents each. Big machete at dollar seventy nine. Taylor Beats. Cool. Wool blankets eight eighty five. Oh, no, four ninety for the one oh nine. Cool. Let's get some. Same, that's all kind of fishing stuff. But anyways, so there's all that from the FC Taylor Fur Company. And there's Moore's shipping receipts. Or shipping tags for your all your fur. Like this is fur market news. I found this stuff in a little antique bookstore down in Winnipeg, stuffed into the back corner. Just, these papers were just stuck in there. Okay. Okay, it's 1945, this stuff. So, I mean, for a loose piece of paper from 1945, and it is in such perfect shape. Mink, dark, $35 or more. And then on down. 
Muskrat's 325 or more. Of course, that's what they quote. Probably ain't what you actually got. Raccoons, 550. Otters, 25 bucks. Open this up careful like. And it's a fur market report. That's cool. And here, this is Boy Scouts of America, the Summit. It's a paper put out, um, just a, a little doodad thing from, there, I'm sure there was a, I don't want to take it out, I'm sure there was a date on some of it. Anyways, Troop 71 from Summit, Pennsylvania. Kind of cool. I don't know where I got that even. But here's Animal Trap Company of America. Dear sir, thank you for ordering your re recent request for how to catch more fur with a night of Victor traps. No, oh, and check this out. H. Van Cleve. I have a book downstairs written by Van Cleve. It's How to Trap North American Animals, I believe it's called. But here is a, like a friggin' pristine slip to get a subscription for for fish and game. Send special introductory offer nine months for a dollar. Twenty cents. At twenty cents I think we're talking the nineteen forties. Oh that's HTT oh, the fur fishing game over there. So that little tiny piece of papers Probably seven years old or better. But here is that how to catch more fur with Oneida Victor traps. Pretty cool. Here's more stuff from Taylor, from Taylor Fur Company. Again, I have to open it up to see what the here we got other first market review. The pool, Canadian Fur Pool Limited, Regina, Saskatchewan. Green frozen beef hides, twelve to eighteen cents or to eight cents a pound. Horse hides, four dollars to two fifty each. Dry hides, 23 cents a pound. Okay, I want to be careful with this. For banner results in 1929. Look at this friggin' papers, 90 years old almost. This is the one that was really cool. 1929 Canadian fur prices. Muskrat, $3 for number one extra large and down. Badgers, 55 for silvery choice ones, 55 to $40. Coyotes, silky pale, 38 to $26 in 1929. Beaver, 55 to $45. This must be in Canadian dollars, which has never been as good as American, <laughs> apparently. But mink, $40. Lynx, 75 to $60. I hope I'm pointing this camera in the right direction. Weasels 385, Red Fox 60, Cross Fox 150. And you get over to Martin, Fine Dark 100 to 40 dollars. 
Oh, there's 60 fish are $175. Silver fox from 500 to $75. I'd like to know what that black fox deal is. Hmm. That's pretty cool. And here's the uh, envelope that that thing came f came in. F shipped to a Mr. Abram A. Reimer at Box 30, Shirku, Manitoba. Jeru, maybe it's uh, to G. Jeru, Manitoba. Probably it's not even a town anymore. Here's the shipping uh, advice, shipping uh, tag for sending to them. And here's another pretty interesting thing. Northwood School of Taxidermy, Omaha, Nebraska. November the 11th, 1929. From J.W. Elwood, President. And this is to the same person, Abram A. Reimer from Jeru, Manitoba, Canada. Look at the stamp on there. And here's reduced rate for the trap for the hunting season. Only ten dollars for the course. Send two fifty and balance for 250 a month after that. Unreal. Here's a 1964, the Canadian fur industry. What's in behind this thing? A different page. Consolidated furriers. Is that just the envelope or is there something? Oh, it's got something in Oh, no, it's just the envelope. I took the paper out. And again to the same guy, so I guess I got a whole bunch of stuff from another old, old stamp. This is December 11th, 1928, Canadian Fur Pool in Winnipeg, Canadian Fur Pool shipping tag. And this is from the uh, taxidermy guy again. More taxidermy. Consolidated furriers. December 1st, 1928. I don't want to take this one out. Well, sure, we'll take a peek at it. Prairie Weasels, buck 90. <laughs> buck, man, that's unbelievable. Mink are in good demand. Interior British Columbia, Lake of the Woods, and Mackenzie River skinned, large, $25. Northern mink, large, 20 And so on. Muskrats, a dollar for falls, winters, buck 50. 220 for clean springs. Beaver are weaker, but in fair demand. Extra large, $33. Unbelievable. Lynx are in very good demand. $40 for, or $50 to $40 for extra large, heavy British Columbia skins. Fisher, extra dark, small, $125. Bucks and springy, $20. Cross Fox, dark silvery skins, a hundred dollars. Hmm. White Fox, fifty to forty-five dollars. Oh, Timberwolves are up here, twenty-five dollars. Silvers, Silver Fox, two hundred to seventy-five. 
Otter, 35 bucks. That's so cool. Martin, up to 60 bucks. Hmm. Can you get this thing back in there? And that is December 1st, 1928. And here's the same thing from 1920. Just a, I guess, a condensed down one or something. But, anyways. That's pretty cool. Some of this old, old stuff. I just like collecting old shit, man. Then this little box of goodies here that I have. This is just like little old trapping books. Some of them are old, some of them aren't that old. Trapper's Companion by Kerr. I think that's Kreps. Oh no, it's a Harding book. Okay, and this Russ Carmen's Mink Trapping. Long Liner Mink Trapping. These are newer ones. The Man of Trapper's Guide, Revised Edition. Bait and Lures. Here's, a, here's some Hobbacher stuff. The Trapper Magazine, July, August, September, 1958. The Trapper, 57. Finn, Skins and Game, Sportsman's Pocket. Magazine, October, 1950. How to Trap and Use Lure and Bait for Greater Profit by Hawbarker. Look at the shape of that thing. I wonder if there's actually a date of printing in this thing. Sixty-seven, this is Colony Bears by Choice, The Mink and How to Trap Them by Butcher. The Beaver Trapper's Bible. Coyote Russ Carmen book. Nick Wyshinsky. And then downstairs I've got all the hard covers by Kreps and all, eh, just about every trapping book you can find, you know. Mink and Muskrat Trapping by Hallmark. Look, look at the shape of this friggin' book. It's unreal. Of course, not that old, so. Oh, this is a revised 6th edition. It's 2001. No wonder it's in good shape. Anyways, yeah, so that's just uh, some stuff I wanted to show you. I don't know if I've got anything else up here or if it's all. these bills. <laughs> That's my... Okay, here I brought a few. Oh, I did bring this stuff up here. Anyways, a few of my favorite books. You know, face... I didn't bring... Here's a Wilderness Trail book. That's just a something. Trapping North American Fur Bears by Hawbarker. Fur Trapping. And here's the one from Van Cleef. This is one of the books I, that I had in, from the public library in Aurelia when I was 14 or 15. And this is from the Somerset County Library in Somerville, New Jersey, apparently. Tenth printing, 67. Well, that would be about right. You know, it was a pretty cool little book. I mean, got me, gave me a little bit of you know, knowledge on tracks and stuff like that. Because each one, you know, just a couple basic sets for animals. It was a good read when I was a kid. 
I don't know, didn't help me much on a possum though. I never caught one of them little buggers. Anyways. But here is the Alaskan Trapper's Manual is telling you about. Got that on eBay. But this is the one here that when you took the trapper's count, um, course in Ontario, this was all part of it. It was at the time the, mo the most in-depth trapping thing put out. All about every animal, fur prices from as far back as 1948 all the way up to when this took place and this one here was put out in I guess 84 because it's got up to 82, 83 in it. So. Then you get into all the different traps. That's just pages and pages and pages of them. And then fur handling, everything else. It was a pretty cool book. You know, I seen that on, on eBay too and I just snagged that up few years back. Anyways, alrighty. So, well here, maybe I'll just scoot over and go over to where I trap now, so you can see that real quick. I'll just show you my trap line. Those red lines are my trap line. So, cabins right there and I want to build another one here. I'm going to find out about that this summer. This is where I come in the road comes in like this and I go up through here to the trail and then I got to go from here off my trap line because that's where the trail goes and then onto the other road and back in over here. But this here whole area this is not you know it's pretty hard to get to in the before ice up or if you don't get enough snow like this year I never even got into this whole area here this year because of uh, lack of snow for my snowmobile so I would if I had a cabin over here I could stay there because I can get there easy enough I just can't get past it but I could stay there and then just I could walk even with uh, without having snow it's only you know a couple miles here and back and forth so but yeah, this is also my, my bear hunting area. All these are bear baits that I have. You'll see through the whole area here. And I have some down now and so on. So, you know, and this is, you know, you're talking from here to that end. It actually goes right to there. It's 37 miles. And then this way is... That's the edge of my area there. This way is 22 miles that way. So, this is where we do our deer hunting too, mostly. Um, pretty much all of this uh, be like here, and then all down over to here, and that whole area in there, and then a lot along here we had. Um, stands in there too did really good on the on the big road this year so anyways that's it guys that's the end of my report for tonight I'm just hoping this video worked out have a good night